Tim Joyce. Here we are. Here we are. Where 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 do we find ourselves, Mr. Popovich? Um, oh, I thought you were asking yourself, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, ourselves. Like, are you lost? Do you need a? Do you need me to show you bit. the way? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're you're in Dublin, right? I think. Yep. HQ. Okay. Health Beacon uh, HQ. Uh, I'm here in San Mateo. Um, you know, right outside of San Fran. Um, for I literally just ran back to the room. I'm at the DTX West Conference. Okay. Um, so Chris Goy and team organized it, and I actually it was perfect timing with a couple of meetings on both sides. And I'm here talking DTX shop and, and the, building my the... pipeline. Uh, it just <laughs> it just it just started like two hours okay. ago, so not not okay. much and uh, to record like, yet. Okay, but I'm awesome. looking I'm looking forward to it. But we're you know exciting. Um, I'm I'm super excited, and I know last time. Um, I'm letting our guest in. Last time we had one of our quicker episodes because we, you know, well, I was squeezed on time on both ends, but I don't know. I think we might be able to do the quickest episode ever because Mr. Daniel Kraft, <laughs> welcome. You're like, uh, I love listening to you because you just take us through your whole life and <laughs> all the latest innovations in super speed. So welcome to the shot of digital health therapy, Mr. Kraft. That's that's Dr. Kraft, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kraft, <laughs> Dr. Kraft. Yeah, yeah. Great to welcome, see you. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I I don't know if you've met Jim, but Jim, oh, yeah. 100%. Do, Dr. Kraft. Okay, you guys met. Hundred percent. Then, then big, no introduction big fan, needed. Big fan. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if you've actually watched any of these, but we want to know everything on what, you know, when you were born through now, <laughs> but you know, that's up to you. However All you right. want to take us through your life. We got time. This is the uh, shot, right? This is my big shot. This is, the shot. This is your big this, shot. This, 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 is, this, is, this is your shot. You get one shot. It's kind of okay. Um, <laughs> I was born in London, as you can tell from my accent. I grew up in the East Coast in the DC area where I, Got my start in science at the National Institutes of Health, where I did a science for a project that won all sorts of awards. And eventually that turned into Zolaire, a big drug. I wish I knew about IP and biotech back then. Oh, cool. um, went to Brown for undergrad and got to be an ambulance driver. So I got my hook into into, into medicine um, or clinical work. Um, also ran the flying club, learned how to fly, did a bunch of space stuff. Went to Stanford for med school, where I did... Uh, uh, the extended plan, including a couple of years doing stem cell research and doing NASA research and going to Nepal and doing medical expeditions and uh, doing an early digital startup called the Online Medical Bookstore back oh. in the 90s. And then I went to Harvard to do residency at Mass General Hospital, both in internal medicine and pediatrics uh, for four fun years. Um, came back to Hotel California for fellowships in hematology, oncology, bone marrow transplantation, and also was a part of the very first year of Stanford Biodesign, which is now a really amazing program yep. around solving challenges invented a medical device got much more involved in digital health first put in the first dmrs at stanford and then amongst other activities including doing still space stuff with nasa being a flight surgeon in the international guard and uh doing a couple other startups uh became the founding faculty of something called singularity university where they That's uh, right. asked me to help uh figure out the future of medicine so that was a great chance to connect dots from different worlds and from that built a program called exponential medicine now called next med health where you know the theme is how do you reinvent the future of health and medicine through the collaboration of all sorts of folks, not just digital, but everything from the CRISPR people to the psychedelics to the chatbots to the drones. So um, that's a very super shot. Shot. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> we're my gonna, favorite color is blue. Yeah. We we're gonna have to like rewind all the way back. And I, I actually caught this. Um, you said something. What got you started in medicine in college? So can we rewind back? Because um, you kind of said um, I forget you were. You, you got kind of your shot of medicine and the interest in it very early on. And I'm yeah. curious what actually did that to you, right? Like well, what's the, the... Yeah, it was the combination. Um, always liked science and biomedicine. Um, got the chance to do an internship in high school at the NIH where I was making antibodies and playing with mice and came up with this idea of using an anti-IgE monoclonal antibody to block the IgE receptor and cure allergies, which ended up working. And again, eventually became this drug called Zola that Genentech and Roche have. Um, when I was at Brown, we had the world's only student-run ambulance service, emergency medical services. We had an ambulance and we'd run around, frankly, mostly taking care of drunken frat kids who twisted their ankle at a party. But you know, we had some real calls, but you know, you, any chance to... 
<laughs> be a clinician and take care of folks and be in the emergency room. That kind of made the taste. And I love the idea of combining science, medicine, biotechnology to solve for things. Um, and then, you know, from there, I went to Stanford and never wanted to be just a pure clinical doc or researcher, but kind of blend all those modalities. So that's how I kind of got started. And, and, and you just threw in and then learned how to fly. Did you, do you actually fly? Like, did you figure out how to physically fly or do you fly planes? <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a pilot now. I actually own <laughs> half an airplane with uh, a fellow physician entrepreneur. Um, but I got, I was lucky in college. We had a flying club at Brown. It was only $20 an hour for the gas in the plane. Wow. So wow. So I learned. I got my how much is it now? Curious. Oh, 180. Um, this is a Cessna 1970 Cessna 150. You might be able to get one for 120 an hour. Um, but I was I was always a space geek. Actually, when I was a little kid, I was at the Apollo 17 launch and um, have a whole NASA and space side of my career. But yeah, I'm still a pilot. I actually spent also 14 year 14 years as a flight surgeon in the Air National Guard, uh, as you know, basically flying in F-15s and F-16s as the doctor to the squadron so part of your job was to take care of the, the 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 wing and the pilots but also you get to fly with them so i got to kind of be doctor fighter pilot uh on the side wow. um but that was a great and also went to international space university and did a lot of nasa and other i also got to be an astronaut but but what was fun about that whole journey even though i got medical doubt my left eye knocked me out of the final sure. selection i even went to nasa and did the interviews and all that stuff it was the the world of folks from different worlds, you know, engineering, physics, policy, uh, folks who wanted to go to Mars, all that cross collaboration has a lot of synergies with, you know, how do you create this cross collaborative future of health and medicine? So lots of synergies. And wait, before we go, I just got to get some medical advice here. Like what's <laughs> the, um, you know, so I spend a lot of time in airplanes, like what's your view on that? Like how, how's that impacting my health? Like, is it, you know, is it, <clears throat> Yeah, I just flew back and forth to Dubai, 15 hours each way. Uh, helps to have a lie flat seat. Uh, yeah, the radiation is probably not good for you. The dry, the dry air, hydrate, hydrate, and try and get your sleep cycles as, as best you can when you're crossing time zones. But, uh, you know, we're in the jet age. Um, <laughs> good, 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 good. Thanks, mate. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the flat seat uh, um, definitely helps for sure. <laughs> You know, I, you you also you talked about biotech, um, you know, science molecules, um, but the pure tech because I think also the whole kind of singularity as a movement also involved a lot of the technology stuff. When did you get the aha moment that holy crap? I mean, technology can actually enhance our lives as well. And yeah, there's there's negatives to everything, right? But that's a whole other discussion. Well, I think the view I always have is you know, not to look at, I'm not, I don't call myself a futurist. I'm more of a nowist. I like, you see so many challenges when you're a clinician or a patient, like, and my usual mode is like, well, how can we solve that better? And sometimes that is mashing up different technologies and ideas, whether it's the digital health side of the equation, or it's the, you know, biotech side or this blended world. Um, so it's not about the molecule anymore or the app or the data. It's how you connect the dots and new ways to solve for a, a pain point, whether it's prevention, diagnostics, therapy, global health, public health. And I think a lot of us get very siloed in one little yeah. area. And the most magic things happen is, is happened at Exponential Medicine, which I ran and NextMed Health now is like, you get folks from different worlds cross collaborating and learning and, and, and changing mindset. Cause it's often about mindset and incentives more so than the technology stack. Yep. I, go, go ahead, ahead Jim. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna I was gonna jump right in and dig it into like next bed, but you go you go ahead first, Eugene. What were you gonna ask? Yeah, I was I was gonna leave it with a CTA towards the end, but I actually see on the other side of the logo is digital health, which is this is a you know a shot of digital health therapy. So you know you've not just been an innocent bystander in that whole digital health movement. Um, <laughs> you've been driving it. You've been part of it. You've been creating it with the entrepreneurs. Um, Maybe I, I'm curious, kind of your thoughts what transpired in the last decade um, in digital health. And, you know, I love your comment on your nowist. And we also know that there's a lot of stuff going on. The models are still being trying to figure it out. But I'm curious on your kind of rewind of 10 years and where we are now uh, in the nowist stage. Yeah, I I actually, uh, I had a chance to kind of give a talk on that theme, um, you know, looking back 10 years and where are we oh. going? Word, and I'm putting a link in here. You guys can share it later. Awesome. Um, the the 
the kind of nice with that was like 10 years ago, now 11, I gave it my second TED talk, the future of medicine. There's an app for that. You know, they titled it differently, uh, you know, which was the early age. I mean, we only had, we had a couple of years in the iPhone. There were only 20,000 health apps. 10 years later, there's 300,000 digital health platforms. So kind of looking at 10 years back and 10 years to now to the forward uh, challenges, there's a lot of digital health solutions out there already, you know, uh, uh, James, you've been building them, and Eugene, you've been involved in all sorts of them as well. The challenge is, how do you get them into the hands of the patient, the consumer, the clinician? And we're pretty rare breed. We kind of can try and keep up with the latest and greatest, but there's still too much. So right. the digital.health idea was in, in realm that, number one, I got the domain. I'm like, I should do something with that. Was that <laughs> the pain point to solve for is, let's start with the clinician side, whether it's you know, the next generation, a live core or something for smart sharp trackers or mental health. There's a lot out there now. How do you match the challenge, the clinical problem to the solution that's out there? So if you go to digital health, you can search for anything from psoriasis to, to depression, to diabetes, and you'll find hundreds of solutions, some of which might be a great match for you or your patients, your healthcare system. And the idea yep. is that we have to connect the dots and make that a useful uh, almost a digital formulary where you can keep your favorites, you can prescribe them, and then a community to cross fertilize and learn. And where are you at you know, right now? I know you're, you're you're working with our good friend, right? Yeah, my co-founder and uh, CEO, uh, Parisa Vitanka, sort of pharmacist, digital health extraordinaire, uh, power woman. Yeah, we've uh, we've just launched it a few months ago. It's still really early. We're in the midst of now retooling it and and uh, optimizing it. But, you know, the challenge with digital health is not one thing to any one person. If you're a pharmacist, you have a different lens. If you're a physician, if you're a physical therapist, if you're a patient. So we want to make this a super useful platform to enable digital health and to find and enable you to, to eventually get these into the workflow of the clinician, of which there's all sorts. So you can use these tools and eventually they get paid for and integrated into a workflow, which is always the last mile uh, of, of, of solution. So I'm um, I'm um, I'm here at the DTX West uh, now, um, and uh, Risa is here. And I was actually, but I just you know I felt a little awkward asking her to my room um, to to say hello. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, <laughs> but shout out to her um, anyway. Well, that's just what you're at DTX West, and there's now all these true digital therapeutics. But but how does a let's say putting the doctor hat on, even find those and learn and prescribe them and, and, and get them used. There's still a gap, you know, in Europe, you know, DIGA, which is a system in, in Germany, yep. that isn't even had much traction and they're regulated and paid for. So there's still a gap between the art of the possible and what's here today, little and what's coming next. Yep. And I think, you know, the future is going to be a little more consolidated. No one wants to have 10 different wearables and apps. Like I was kind of the one ring to use them all that Mediverse, M-E-D-I, verse, trademark, uh, that will enter this age of, <laughs> of I think, um, generative health. There's like generative AI and G GPT, which will really start to blend these things together without segmented, siloed, you know, solution sets. Since you brought it up, I honestly wasn't going to go there, but you mentioned the magic <laughs> word, chat GPT. I'm actually looking forward to moderating Microsoft and Google on the same stage at the ATA in a couple of weeks. So um, as a yeah. doctor your thoughts on GPT? Well, it's almost like an internet moment, right? It only came out, what, November? So it's been like three months. Right. And now right. uh, there's other, obviously versions of being personalized. Uh, Doximity came out with Docs Chat or something like that, where you write your notes and your medical student recommendation letters and your insurance things, you know, a little formatted for the clinical side. So it has tremendous applications. I think one of the most obvious ones would be um, to synthesize complex medical records, whereas physicians, we get these chart reviews, like you can never make your way through the chart. It can read all the notes and synthesize everything from the uh, scribbles of handwriting from an old school version to the uh, the acronyms that you don't understand or remember anymore. Okay. Um, and also for the patient side, we spend so much time telling our clinical story. It's going to be able to tell that from our digital exhaust and integrating our labs and medical records, as well as, of course, when you ask a question of the chat bot, you know, I've got abdominal pain. It's going to know if you had your appendix out. <laughs> it's not going to ask you the same dumb questions. It's going to know your medical history, your pharmacogenomics, uh, where you've been, your 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 socioome and your other um, context. So, so many applications we could run through more. I think it has the potential. I like to call it this term. I don't know if I came up with it, generative health. So if we fast forward a few years, instead of getting the same printouts, the same language, you know, you can have a general bubble around you. It might be the VR environment, the music you hear, the coaching, the diet, the drug insert, the instructions that help you optimize prevention, diagnostics, therapy, and, and even public health. I just heard coaching and my ears popped up. I, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be replaced. There'll be chat. You know, it'll just take all your prior coaching and, and, and put it there. 
And, but and, coaching and, is a perfect analogy. If you have a health coach versus any other coach, you need to learn that person's personality, age, culture, language, incentives. And I think the chat GPT things, including for health coaching, for you know, will be super powerful because today it's the same user interface on your Apple Watch or Fitbit or the handout you get from your doc, you know, and those can be made much more personal. And, and when you think about these DTX systems and, you know, think about, like, say, Eugene's project with with health coaching, you know, are clinicians, you know, are is the traditional clinician the right person to be prescribing or recommending a DTX? Well, right now, I mean, in medical school, do they train anybody at all about digital therapeutics or digital health? I mean, I'm down this, I'm going to Stanford to give a talk in half an hour. Uh, I don't think that's much on the curriculum. So it needs to be sort of embedded. Like what's your digital formula? And sometimes it combines with the drug. It could be the connected blood pressure cuff and app and your beta blocker. Um, I think there's a real need to, again, up-level that. How do you get that aware that I'm seeing a patient with, I'm, I'm a pediatrician as well, like with ADHD, do you know about Achilles health? How do you prescribe that? Right. Paid for? How does it get in the hands of the parent? Um, and then is it working, um, you know, for that individual kid? So lots of barriers to integrate it in and in, in aligning of incentives. And are you, are you seeing that in medical schools now? Is, is there tracks developing or is it still kind of early? I think there's some scattered ones. I've helped teach a course with our friend uh, Shafi Ahmed at Bart's yeah. course. Um, we're going to put, uh, we're designing a sort of digital health 101 for digital health. So I think that could be a, a home to kind of keep folks up to speed. There's lots to keep up with, whether you're an entrepreneur, you need to know regulatory, or you're a clinician. And, you know, can you get your sort of personal formula? If you go to digital.health, you can look at some samples we had around internal medicine and neurology and surgery of, you know, some things that might be useful for you today in terms of diagnostics or therapeutics or, digital therapeutics. I think, you know, there's a lot of education that needs to be occurring and a lot of alignment. Cause if I send someone home with uh, an app to check their kid's ear for otitis media, am I getting paid for that? Am I incentivized as a pediatrician to use that? So it'll depend if you're at the NHS or Kaiser or VA or, or, uh, you know, anywhere else in, in, in matching that. Jim, we're, we're, we're right now cannibalizing completely my DTX podcast. That's, you know, this is the wrong <laughs> podcast for DTX questions. Oh, sorry, no, I'm kidding. Sorry. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, so, stop siloing things, right? You can't put things in one bucket. No, I, I, I full, you know, full, full this is just full a shot. Agree. This is, this is just a shot. <laughs> just a shot. Just a shot. Just a shot. So re, rewind us back a little bit before we get to today and next med um you know kind of the the concept of the singularity and then how the the og x med was born as a you know yeah. offshoot for lack of a better term and you know peter diamantes and and others that were on the team and yeah. just for some of the listeners so way back when i was a medical student i ended up at international space university designing missions to mars and that's where i met peter and the other co-founders of, and that became a bit of the model of what later 20 years later was Singularity University, that, that you're crossing silos and bridges. And I became the chair of medicine at Singularity University, which is, we always joke, was not about the singularity, even though it was co-founded by Ray Kurzweil. And it was not a traditional university. And we started off with these magical 10-week summer programs with you know students, usually in the mid-30s, from all sorts of fields, looking at understanding exponential technologies, AI, robotics, 3D printing, nanotech, blockchain, Synbio, all these things moving quickly. And how do you leverage those to solve grand challenges? And then putting on my hat, we started to do these sort of small executive programs and everyone's interested in healthcare from a personal level or otherwise. And many fields are coming into healthcare from the AI world to video gamers to, to you name it. So that was where the nidus of building exponential medicine was that we needed to create a platform that was unsiloed. Patients, physicians, biopharma, technologists, pay, you know, the whole spectrum is sort of just being in cardiology buckets and oncology and digital and mm -hmm. pharma. And so the original G, OG, uh, uh, exponential medicine was born, which you ran for till 2019 at the Hotel Dog Coronado with usually five, 600 people from around the world. Eugene, you've been there, you get the flavor. Yeah, beautiful. And how that post pandemic, we had to take a little pause, is now NextMed Health. NextMed.health is the website. And the idea there is not just to be a once a year event at the Hotel Dog, which is a lovely place, but to create more of a, a virtual innovation cross collaboratorium for innovation with you know virtual, physical, hybrid pr programs as well, because it's where you connect the dots and the people ideas where the the magic happens. And that's what happens at the Hotel Dell by the beach with our silent disco and drum circles and everyone from Paul Stamets to, you know, Mike Snyder to Jeff Genetics at, at, at Stanford, you know, in the same room. Yeah. And I'm just, I, I'm actually kind of flipping through some amazing, amazing faculty again. I mean, I, you know, not, not to diminish others, uh, just my, you know, some familiar like Shauna is back, Butler, Lucian, um, 
Jennifer Goldsack, Rasu. Uh, Aloe Black is our musician. Aloe Black is great. Oh, uh, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Leroy Hood, who's the you know father of you know P4 Medicine. Uh, Ron Balliser is a real amazing thought leader, uh, heading all the work out of Khalid, out of Israel, which he'll figure out whether vaccines work. David Eagleman in neuroscience. Alistair Martin, who's a, a fellow out of the White House you now at MGH doing Vote ER. Sangeeta Reddy, who runs hospital system, Apollo Hospital Systems. Daisy Robinson on Femtech. Uh, folks like Alex... Stuff rocked off on you know AI meets drug discovery. Even Thomas Getz is just joining us to talk about. That's AI. right. I you know. Just scrolled uh, right through him. Iodine, yeah. right? That was that was his baby. If I'm right. Which Correct. iodine? Yeah, he started iodine, which got acquired yeah. by Gunnix, which had that That's quite. Right. So again, if you look at our faculty, amazing health slash faculty, you see it's not your usual single line of fact of, of folks. You know, folks like David Fagenbaum who's doing amazing work on drug repurposing, or um, you know. Um, uh, even uh, Dave Albert, of course, one of the fathers of digital medicine, in a sense, you know, uh, telling the story of how he went from 10 years ago, the little prototype, to now, you know, you see ads on CNN for LiveCore, and they just won a patent battle with Apple. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yep. No, they just I won a that. patent battle at LiveCore. Yeah. What, what was uh, Biden's, Biden was supposed to vote? I, I'm not following it at closely, to be honest. But I mean, it's a it's a very significant case because you have, the, is the patent system going to get broken if folks like Apple can just basically spend all the money and prosecute and kill smaller companies who have invented and even, I don't know all the details. I'm not an IP yeah. expert, but no, it's, I got important, you. it's important to, for young startups and others, if they develop an innovation that is not going to get taken over by the, the, the big players later in the wrong way. Um, and I believe, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I just think it's a good example of where we need to reward innovators like like Dave Albert and the Life Court who take things from uh, from a kludgy 12 lead EKG to something on your watch. So you seem you seem like you had this just incredible capacity to recall, you know, projects and people and all this stuff. It, it is how do you stay on top of all this? Do you feel like you're staying on top of the digital health ecosystem? Digital dot health. That's the way to do it. <laughs> well, I go to I go to digital health and I see what shows up in the database. I'm like, wow, I had no idea. There's a, a another company doing AI meets radiology meets uh, neurotech, you know, <laughs> or. Um, some you know very interesting wearables and otherables that are are out there from all around the world. So I think it's an exciting time for digital health. Obviously, we have you know challenges in the macroeconomic environment, but if we can get these tools into healthcare systems and be not just on the consumer side where they've traditionally been, but more and more as the DTX equivalent is into the therapeutic side and public health side, it can make a big difference. So I don't know. I, I don't tend to think things in just the digital health bucket. It's sort of this convergence, and um, you know, right? Yeah. So next met is a few weeks away. Um, I know you never want to pick uh, any of the favorites, but like some highlights of the agenda that, you know, I just remembered my first time at XMED and I just remember, uh, you know, on my way to the airport, I called Marina and my wife and I'm like, my mind was just blown, right? Like just blown. So I, again, just curious kind of, uh, I'm sure people can just go see the agenda, right? But um yeah, I'll give you a couple of highlights, you know, and before Eugene came, he had, used to have hair. I'll get blown away. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, some interesting ones that are just emerging. So Baroness Nicola Blackwood, who's chair of Genomics England, is coming. And they've done some really interesting work there, you know, sequencing adults and now kids. She's bringing this, the CEO of Genomics England. Uh, and we'll we'll, we'll pair, her, pair, pair her in, in breakouts as well with like Mike Snyder, the chair of Geno Genetics at Stanford, who also has the Stanford Innovation Lab, where they're now doing multiomics. So they just published last month single drops of blood, like Theranos for real, doing multi-amics, not just the, the genes, but yeah. the protein, other amounts blended with digital wearable data and get a really interesting longitudinal picture of, of, of health. So when we start to come to the $10 genome and multi-omics and with folks like Ron Balliser, who will be in a session there with the health system and connecting the dots, what does that mean in the real world? And how do we use your digitome and other elements to be proactive and predictive or to manage disease in a much more feedback loop driven way. We're still in the fax machine era of healthcare and there's a lot of work. So those are a couple of things that will be fun. Awesome. I'm looking forward to hearing Paul statements again on the latest, not just on psychedelics, which is always interesting, but the evidence base around, you know, uh, psilocybin for, for mental health um, mm. or folks like Ken Dykewald on the age wave and how do we think about living longer and health span or, Daisy Robinson on, you know, the new elements of, you know, prolonging uh, ovarian health, you know, to maybe stave off menopause, but also other implications. So I think wow. there's no one element that's most exciting to me. It's how you mix these people up and the folks who come and join, uh, what kind of the magic happens. I have FOMO. I awesome. Have FOMO. But um, 
Listen, uh, before I, I start crying about not being there, uh, Jim, do we <laughs> want to go to your final question? The, the, your, your famous. So picture yourself, uh, Dr. Kraft at a, um, in a, uh, a kind of a windy fall morning in, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, you know, just not far from Brown University. And you're, you're coming off of a stage. I don't know if there's even a stage there, but you're just coming off of a stage and you had, had done a version of your talk and, and your talk was about being a Nowist. And, and you see this young, this, this young, uh, obviously incredibly intelligent, uh, young good man, looking. comes walk, good looking man comes walking up to you and says, and says, Daniel, he says, Dr. Kraft, Dr. Kraft, I've been watching you. I've seen your original talks. I too am a Nowist. And um, and I just got my new uh, technology listed on your your digital uh, digital health, your digital dot health platform, and it's out there. And I'm just starting my company and I'm seeking funding. And one day I would have been in Singularity University. And you looked at that young entrepreneur and he says, but could you just give me that one piece of advice when I'm starting out right now in my journey? How do I get my uh, technology into the universe? What's the one piece of advice you'd give them? Well, first, tell me more because I do have a seed stage digital health venture fund called Continuum <laughs> Venture. So we are looking at seed stage digital health companies. Uh, that's one. But taking off the investor hat, it's it's like what piece of advice would I have? It's it's it almost goes back to the Stanford Biodesign days, which which was like don't just see a there's lots of pain points and problems, but understand it in the context of the payer, of the patient, of their family, of the pharmacist. So you're not solving for something and then you put it out there and you build it but no one comes. So you have to understand the socium around it and the incentive models. And that may work differently in Ireland or in New York City or in you know Singapore. Um, another piece I would advise would be, you know, build the right teams around you. The, 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 now they're in this age, you don't need to build your own tech stack. You can download the app or the chat GPT can do it for you. So it's like build the right, I was going back in time and I've been lucky to have a really amazing mix of people. Like build that collaboratorium of, of people from different fields. Because even in college, you kind of hang out with the pre-meds or the biochem majors like me. And you need to hang out with the AI and the CS and the medical uh, and the engineering folks and the video gamers. Because if you're going to build that future, uh, it's, it's at this conversion point. And so don't get stuck in one silo. Uh, you know, because the future is already here; it's just not evenly distributed. And you, you young, young man, are lucky enough to help build it. Awesome, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> On that, thank you very much. Go give your amazing lecture to the next generation, and uh, you know, for those who uh, are going to be privileged to be at NextMed, awesome, awesome. Enjoy. Yeah, you can track me down at uh, DanielCraftMD.net, NextMed.health, and Digital.health. So, um, always looking for friends and co-conspirators to help build the now and the near and the next. Fantastic. Wow. And send our regards to Risa. <laughs> See ya.